Well, we start now with some breaking news out of Libya. A military training center in the Libyan town of Zliten was hit by a truck bomb on Thursday, causing dozens of casualties. Witnesses said the casualties included civilians, some of whom were taken to hospital in the nearby city of Mesrata. Now, we will bring you more on that story as we get it. In the meantime, though, we uh, stay in Libya with a developing story that we have been following closely. At least uh, four petroleum storage tanks were set ablaze during deadly fighting as the Islamic State group tried to seize coastal export terminals in eastern Libya on Wednesday. The fighting, in which at least 10 security guards died, began Monday as UN Libya envoy Martin Kobler struggled to convince the country's rival parliaments to agree on a unity government deal. Maria Galang has more. The fires broke out at key terminals in Al Sidra and Ras Lanouf, located in the so called Oil Crescent along Libya's northern coast. It was not clear whether the fires were still burning or if fighting was still underway for a third successive day in the ISIL push to seize the terminals. Hopefully, the situation is now good and the men have everything under control. They have casualties and losses. We also have murders, no more than 10, and about 30 wounded. They have nowhere to take their wounded, but thank God, our wounded are in Misrata, Tripoli, and Ajdabia. Mustafa Sanala, chairman of the rival NOC management in Tripoli, condemned the attacks and urged the swift formation of a national unity government and the establishment of a unified force structure capable of bringing peace to the country. ISIL has been trying for several weeks to push east from its coastal stronghold of Sirte, and officials have warned of crippling consequences if the jihadists manage to seize control of Libya's oil resources. Oil is Libya's main natural resource, and the country sits on reserves estimated at 48 billion barrels, the largest in Africa. But unrest has forced a major slump in oil production. Maria Galang, CCTV. All right, let's get to an update now on that story. I'm joined live from Cairo by CCTV's Yasser Hakim. Yasser, this has been really a rather unrelenting attack by ISIL on Libya's oil resources. Just give us an idea of the latest on the scene right now. Has it fighting, I mean, is fighting still underway or at least have the fires, uh, have, I mean, have the fires been put out? Well, the, the fires have uh, not fully pu been put out, but uh, most of it has been. However, the fighting is not over. We understand from our sources that uh, the uh, ISIL uh, forces are uh, also uh, surrounding the area and tr will try again to and are trying to uh, take over the oil refineries. Um, the uh, British, uh, French and Italians have deployed their special forces uh, around uh, 3,000 of their special forces into the area to try to secure uh, the uh, refineries and uh, make sure they're not totally taken over by ISIL. C concerning the two refineries in the Sidra and Ras Lanouf that were mentioned in the report, they are considered uh, to produce half of the total output of oil in Libya. Libya with the largest oil refineries in, in Africa, this is a significant amount, over 560,000 uh, barrels per day output go out of those two before uh, the unrest. Uh, so so th they are major refineries in the region. Uh, and uh, ISIL is also trying to uh, spread to another area, Marsa Breja, that's another uh, set of oil refineries that also uh, amount to nearly the other half of, of uh, Libya's output. So it's obvious a tactic by the uh, ISIL right now to take over Libya's oil refineries, making use of the uh, vacuum in, in, in security and, and the uh, different political forces in Libya fighting together. And, it's, and ISIL is making use of this. Well, as you say there, Yasser, of course, uh, ISIL looking to spread this attack out onto other oil refineries in Libya. Just how concerned is Egypt over these developments? Do you think Cairo might look to intervene uh, in what's happening here? Well, e Egypt and the Egyptian leadership for the last two years has been 
uh, calling on the international community to intervene has been warning that ISIL will take refuge uh, and uh, spread out in, in, uh, in Libya out uh, of uh, Syria and Iraq and make Libya the new center for its operations uh, for in Africa and, and, there, and this is now on the ground. Uh, Egypt has been working with Libyan authorities for the past uh, couple of years in training, uh, providing logistical support, and also it has uh, been part of uh, airstrikes uh, on, on uh, ISIL uh, checkpoints uh, in, in, in Libya uh, in, in 2015 a couple of times. Now, uh, I, we do not get any information, not get any official information that Egypt will intervene. But uh, uh, there, it's been known, it's not a secret, that Egyptian leadership has been working with the Italians and a couple of other European countries to try to forge some kind of coalition that would intervene in Libya and make sure that uh, the militants are not able to infiltrate, whether through the borders to Egypt or through the sea to, to Europe. Well, of course, Yasser, in the midst of all this chaos, we know that Martin Kobler is in Libya trying to push for the formation of a unity government. At this stage, has there been any progress on that front? Not really, not at this point. Uh, the, he is in extensive uh, negotiations with the political parties to try to put uh, on the ground the, the agreement that has been signed by the, European, by the United Nations and uh, different uh, leaders from both uh, the main uh, parliaments, uh, the, the re internationally recognized parliament and the uh, other parliament, the rival parliament in Tripoli. Uh, the problem is that uh, while some of the leaders have signed the, this agreement in Libya, others are against it, parliament members uh, are against it, the, especially the ones in Tripoli, the Islamic-backed uh, militias there. Uh, the problem in Libya is that you're not uh, talking with two rival factions, no, you're talking with like five or six uh, at least rival factions and each faction has its own militia, has its own military uh, powers, has its own regions that it controls in Libya. So it, it's not an easy uh, situation there. Uh, and. Uh, what we hope and what politicians here in Egypt are telling me, they hope that the ISIL uh, threat would be a catalyst for a unity between all the rival uh, political factions in Libya uh, and that would, they would unify uh, their, their political, their, their uh, uh, military sources as well to fight uh, ISIL at this point. But uh, until now, it, it's been a tough situation for Martin Kobler. Well, thank you very much for that update. Yasser Hakim live for us there in Cairo, keeping a close eye on developments there, of course, in Libya.